hey, outro here. Today we're going to talk about an installation of a Fanimation fan. A Fanimation airdrop fan, which is a remote operated fan that I purchased at Lowe's. I'm not sure where else it's available. I'm going to go over the whole process of assembling the fan and we'll also share my tips and tricks on, uh, on getting the installation better. At the end of the video, I will do an overview where I will discuss the whole installation. Right, so I purchased this fan, it's a uh, Fanimation Airdrop. They went with a fancy air. It's a 52 inch uh, ceiling fan. Since the room is not that big, it should work. Let's open this up and uh, see what's in there. And I'm just using a regular kitchen knife to open this. So let's open this and see what's inside this box. Um, I think it's a piece of paper that serves no purpose. Next, we have, it looks like, instructions. All right, so a Fanimation airdrop ceiling fan. Is this? Do not use this fan with a dimmer switch or variable speed wall control. Using a dimmer switch or variable speed wall control will damage the fan. So that's a good thing to know. And book by itself, it's the uh, installation guide. And it looks like it's in English and in Spanish. Uh, it should be pretty easy. So uh, we'll be installing it in a second and we'll be following along this guide. Here we have several blades. Yeah, so all five blades are here in the pack. And there, you can see there are two colors. One side is just uh, silver. And on the other side, it's uh, dark, dark wood. All right, so here we have, okay, so it's the, uh, all these different rings that are gonna be shaping up and go into the, to the ceiling. This is a, looks like, okay, so this is gonna be the, the bracket uh, that will be going into the ceiling. Uh, and the whole, the whole fan is gonna be kind of from what I recall, it should just go into this mount and I'll be hanging in it. I will confirm it shortly. We have something in the bubble wrap. Let's show some electrical connectors. Ceiling fan remote controller. Okay. So this is just a uh, this is for your remote to be able to communicate with the unit. And this is the remote. Mm -hmm. I was wondering what's going to look like. Right, so here's the, uh, the remote. So and it has, uh, it looks like uh, timers that you can set on. So if you want it to shut off after some time, so one, three, and six. Uh, so there's fan speed going up and down. And then, uh, then there's the light. Uh, then you can dim with the remote box. Ooh, there you go. More stuff. Okay, so here is the main mount of the fan. So, go ahead and take it out of plastic. Okay, that's some just storage uh, rubber that is tucked in there. But it's either this is just for storage, or it actually it might be going in. Let me confirm this. Because sometimes it can be a storage, sometimes it just can be a part the, uh, that you will be required to use later on. But it's, uh, it's just rubber. Or just sitting inside there to uh, to block the movement of the bait of the top. Let's take it out of me. The, uh, the bottom piece it's moving right now. So those rubber pieces there just inserted those so they can stabilize it so it's not moving. So this is the actual LED light. It's gonna go inside the dome. So you can see quite a few LEDs. I think it, this is rated for uh, 18 LED watts. So 
Let's see how bright it is. Okay, so there is the uh, down rod piece that the whole pan is going to be hanging on. So I'm going to pull this, this piece over here on top. So it can come on, but it should be dropping into this bracket. And that's how it's going to be hanging. So this will be connected to the ceiling. And then this is just hanging out. And uh, the rest of the assembly will be assembled here with all the blades. And uh, of course the uh, the bottom light, really cheaply made. Uh, this is one of the biggest reservations that I've had with this fan, especially if you're replacing an, an elaborate uh, light fixture, like a chandelier, for example. And uh, now you're putting on, it looks like, like a basic light that you will get with a basic construction with the fan attached to it, but still like just this just looks so plain and cheap. But let's see how it looks when it's fully installed. And then uh, there's a little bit of uh, hardware stuff. So uh, different bolts, nuts and uh, connection, uh, electrical connectors, nuts. So let's uh, get the old chandelier removed. And uh, we'll put this all up. First things first, we need to turn off the light. Now I just kind of have to unravel those wires inside so then we can uh, lower the assembly. I see it's even right now I loosened it up a little bit more and the whole chandelier just came out. So now we have uh, this connection over here from leftover from the chandelier setup, but we need to switch out to this one here. Uh, so this one, as you can see, it will be connected with these uh, two holes and they need to get connected to this bracket to here on top. So first thing is uh, we're gonna remove this, this bracket over here with these two bolts. Let's read the manual. So, first thing is to remove the two set screws and locking nuts of the downroad support from the motor assembly. It's these two. Whenever I'm dealing with a bunch of bolts and uh, nuts, I like to use a uh, magnetic tray, like this one. So, you see, it's kind of like this. So uh, on the bottom it has magnets, here at the top you just throw in whatever magnets you want. So I have, uh, right now I have a build going on, a computer build, so there's a bunch of uh, bolts from that. But eh, I can even the same, use the same tray for multiple items, so I'll be able to just put like, trays as I need them as they go around. Tip for the future, in case if you want to invest in something that will be uh, useful throughout your life, so it's these six screws over here on top. And uh, since like I didn't I didn't want to damage anything at the bottom, so I'm using a soft surface and uh, but th in this case it's an ottoman, it's a bit too soft. All right, so here we have the blades and the uh, Feels like they're made out of like dense styrofoam. They're like extremely, extremely light. The, uh, oh, like I, I didn't expect for them to be this this light, but maybe that's current technology. Okay, so hardware used. Now we take out the screws from the bag of booties. Yep. Right there. Now we have these screws right here and fiber washers Ooh, they're made they're not metal they're like cardboard that's exactly what they actually are all right so 
of his. Put it on. I'll be installing brown facing down, I guess, to be visible since everybody's sitting underneath. So I will be following these instructions. This hole right here, you slide it through, and then those there are three holes in each one of these things go around. Ooh, ooh, ooh. See, I don't, I don't like this design. I already don't like this design. So the cool thing about most of the fans, like when you assemble it, you want to assemble it in on, on like you, so you, let's say you have this housing over here, and then you just have the piece on top of the ceiling where you just plug it in. And then you, you connect this piece and then you can, you can connect the fan, uh, the blades from below because now you have the, the whole thing is already there and then you're just connecting the blades so it's easy here i have to connect all of the blades from inside the assembly because it's done from inside and from inside the cap so i have to connect it from there then i have to seal the, this whole unit now think about this you have about like this much space usually if you're trying to do a short rod like close to the ceiling like in my case so it's going to be about this much space between the ceiling on uh, between this unit and the ceiling bit plus i will have all of these blades sticking out to the sides and somehow i have to work my hand from underneath there and uh get this this part like so this will be here and all of this will be getting hooked up to the light box. It's very awkward. I hope it's not that way. As I've looked over the whole manual, I saw that really if this is the case where we're going to be kind of uh, struggling and uh, fighting over the fans while we're trying to connect it. Unfortunately, this is how we got designed. So if you are on a design team of a fan, here's what I want from my fan. Well, first things first, whenever you're lining up all of these holes, it should be made a little bit more simple instead of just trying to uh, find that one spot. The other thing here, what I'm already foreseeing is uh, so you will have this blade, then another blade, then another blade. So once we're on the fifth blade, how am I holding this down on 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 the floor without all of these boards kind of uh, bending out? So again, since you don't want to put it on a flat surface due to this temple here, so it's always going to be wobbly. So if they would have had some base. The, the quality of this blade is actually really kind of kind of crappy. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a bunch of indentations on it. It's literally, like it was if you just had a it was a styrofoam like covered in like a little bit thicker layer of styrofoam. But I can definitely like dent it just with my running it here with the nail. Well, since this is a reverse, let's see what happens. So I don't know if you can see, but that was just like applying a little bit of pressure with a fingernail. So next, uh, according to the steps, we have uh, we have this piece over here. It's a down rod. So remove the uh, hang the hanger bolt portion from the down rod by 
unscrewing the screw. So here's the, uh, the down rod. You have a screw. Just loosen it. Ugh. Wow. This is a. Uh... Ooh. It's going, but wow. Huh. Okay. I wonder if they meant it this way, but it was uh, intense. Screws throwing that out yet. So there you see it. It holds it. Okay, so okay, so now it slides down, and this is what we did. We just removed the pin that was sitting over here. And you see, it's just freely moving in, in and out. So it just fell out. So we'll put it here inside. The screw is still attached, so we keep that in. So uh, next, let's take out this uh, hairpin. Pull it. And the hairpin comes up. Light, like at the bottom. Um, yeah, well, I think we're, we're gonna, like, at the bottom of this piece, this thing goes in there and inside of it, there's gonna be an LED light shining down on us. But so this thing, it's, we'll say, covering the, uh, the whole mount and the ceiling of it. And then there'll be a rod coming out. And then this will be on top, sitting on top here. So I guess these screws are gonna be sticking out. And then the bottom of this is gonna go over it. And just kind of click in there. So again, we put the ball through. So all the wires will go again through it. Mm -hmm. right, so there's the hole. And so we put it in and then um and there's the pin so the pin will go yeah and this thing slides up and yep like this into the pin and then we tighten this thing this bolt like this bolt right here to keep it in place and this was the bolt that was really, really tight last time. So make it tight again. So now we have all of the wiring coming out of it, including the ground. You need to cut these wires about here. Another uh, really cool tool to have in your uh, toolbox because uh if you're doing things around the house you will always always need one of these connecting the wires into the wires that are coming out of the box so then i also have to connect this box uh, which has a whole bunch of different wires going out and uh, my understanding is that it's going to end up sitting something like this or like this on top of this unit once all of these uh, covers kind of like this, and this will be flush against the ceiling. So all of these wires will have to be connected. Uh, the diagram here in the manual is just, this is insanity. Let me see, where is it? There. Like this. All right, so before I put these switches and everything and start connecting and start bolting it into the ceiling, uh, this box, for example, right here, uh, the, the one that's going up there, it is it, it has uh, five of those uh, divots here where you can use move the mouse into uh, plus and on, on and off. So uh, it's pretty much a binary uh, code that you're creating here, but it needs to match uh, what you have here on your remote. So make sure to, uh, on the back of your remote over here, uh, make sure that they're set to the same exact setting, uh, the same on and off switches are turned on. 
uh, before you put this in because this will go all the way into the electrical box. And yes, technically you could fix it uh, if your fan works or your neighbor decides to start turning on, turning on your fan. But if you want to fix it, um, you will just have to uh, take down most of the canopy so you can pull it out and uh, deal with it. But uh, yeah, quick reminder before I start putting this box high up and hiding it. So bending all the wires out. So you can slide the ball over. Right. Yep. And now it is in there and somehow we need to manage to put all of the stuff in there, including, so we need to connect all of these wires, plus connect the other box of wires. We're gonna use these uh, wire nuts to, uh, to connect the wires. Let's say you have these two wires and you need to connect them. So what you do is you just take them together, you can twist them together, or you can just even, hold them together Good. and then you take the uh, nut you go and it goes over them and you just pretty much just screw screw it on Good. Good. so now you have two wires that are connected inside the screw cap so as soon as i take off the screw cap i can break the connection this is what i was talking about I didn't have any blades around me right now. It would have been nice. Clean box has uh, four wires coming out of it. And uh, because it's already designed for the old style uh, ceiling fan that requires all four connections. And uh, this ceiling fan is designed for a basic uh, box, even though it does recommend strengthening it if, it, uh, if it's not uh, too stable already. But this one is already designed for a fan and it already has all four wires. But anyway, this fan has connection only for three wires. So uh, one of those wires, the uh, the red wire, um, I'm going to keep it, uh, since it's a secondary power, I'm going to keep it uh, taped off, but I will keep it available in case if I need to test it. So let's say if my switch uh, uh, changed. Right now I have a wall plate with two switches and that allows me to control both of those wires. And uh, since before I didn't have one of those uh, plugged in, so it was connected only to one. So I need to make sure whichever switch on the wall plate really controls the wires. And that's the wire that I'm gonna end up using. So I will use the red one and that will determine which wall switch it's uh, gonna be using. This is gonna be a tight squeeze in there. I, this, like this is exactly what I was talking about. So having the, all of the uh, blades up here, it's just like, who comes up with this? Uh, let's put the cap on and hope that the connection is done well. Because we don't have a lot of space here to play with, like I would much rather use uh, a little bit different uh, caps, like if you can get the bigger ones that make a much more secure fit. But in this case, there's just not enough space literally. So I'll, I'm probably going to start like as, as I'm connecting wires, as I connect the group, like I will start bending them in there and uh, hiding them already to uh, clear out the space so I can go in there because this thing still has to slide in there somehow. Wow. Let's see, so the next wire is going to be the white one coming out of the back right here. And this one connects to the white wire from the box right here. Once you start tucking these wires in, there's a lot of possibility for them to come loose. So you want to make sure to, uh, to connect them as well as you can possibly can. So, and there we're not, we shouldn't be using them anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck those things in there. So uh, 
keep healthy. See, there it came out. Let's see if that will give us a little bit more clearance. So what I did is uh, I, I stripped some wire and then now I just wrapped it around here. So now it should have a little bit of better. Since these wires are not going to be used a lot, let's see how this one holds up. I'll go this, I'll pull one a little bit. All right, well, looks like it's uh, gonna, it might stay. So well, now we have uh, a bunch of other wires that uh, we need to connect. But now we're just gonna go with the diagram. I guess it just kind of loosely sits in there. Now we have access to all of these uh, connections, which all have to be just tied in together with, uh, with these nuts. We're gonna connect to this, this block, which is coming in from, from inside the light. The white one, again, out of this side of the box, is connecting with the white on the light. And again, put on the cap, green plus green plus copper. And now we just have the blue left. Yeah, when I was looking at this uh, diagram at first, it just it looked like this uh, spaghetti bowl. Blue, too blue. So at this moment, um, I'm gonna test out if the fan is actually powering on. If all of the connections are done properly, then it should uh, power on. So I'm gonna put in the uh, the battery in the remote, match the polarity, and uh, see if anything happens. It should not, because uh, right now the power is turned off. So I will, I'm gonna turn on the power. Let's hope for no sparks. I, I turned on my regular uh, switch that I had it turned on, uh, on before when I had the chandelier on. So let's see what happens here. Will the fan power on? Look at that. Fan is working. Let's turn it off. So I just turned it off. Let's see if uh, it should stop. Ooh, it's so nice and silent and quiet. So as you, see, as you can see, the, the light is not... Uh, installed on it yet and uh, this is how it's spinning the good thing that we're knowing right now that the wiring actually works and uh, the fan is powering on i'm going to put on the light on the unit first so we can test it to make sure that the light works and everything else works and only then i will uh, close up the spaghetti bowl because if anything i can always take down the light and redo something inside there but it's better be safe than sorry and make sure that everything absolutely works. To install this bracket to the bottom of the light, uh, we need to remove one of these screws right here. And uh, the other ones are, should be just loose because uh, they'll be going into this. As you can see, the removed screw it has to be completely placed in there. And uh, these, you can just slide it around and uh, put it in. So let's take this one out. We have to remove these three uh, screws from the light assembly and set them aside because uh, there's going to be, okay, again, so you want to kind of prop it up uh, just to get it loose. Uh, so this is where the actual LED piece is going to mount. This on the back of it is the connector, so let's connect this thing. So now we're going to test the, uh, the lights, make sure that it works in the moment of truth. Ah, and then we turn on the fan. We did it.
right, so the fan is installed. It is difficult to install the electrical box that comes as a part of the ceiling fan into the uh, ceiling area to put it into the cage. So you have to um, have a really proactive wire management so you don't have too many loose ends. So uh, keep tucking those things in and uh, making sure to have plenty of space for you to work under that uh, small canopy that you have to work with. The other thing was, uh, as I was complaining about, was the blades. Since we had to install the blades inside the mounting bowl from, from the inside, and then it gets covered up, and then it goes up. So that this whole process where you have a whole bunch of blades around you is not very work conducive. It is possible to get other fans where you can actually plug them in from the side, which is exactly what I did on the next fan that I just purchased uh, that I will be installing today. This video will be also uh, uploaded so you can compare the two different installation types and uh, where, what are the benefits. The other thing I noticed during this installation is that uh, the instruction manual can seem a little bit confusing, but if you just take it one step at a time, you'll be perfectly fine and you'll be able to install this fan in no time. It took me two hours and that's because I was constantly readjusting the camera and filming everything. But normally this should not take more than an hour. Uh, overall, so far this fan has been running for about a week and uh, I, re I really like it. It's pretty quiet. I'm guessing due to the weight of the blades, this unit will hold up a lot longer than the older style fans that use those heavy plates. This is all I have, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. And I will have plenty of more videos to come and all about different topics. Subscribe.